Sunday, September the 20th, it's a conversation on the fourth estate on when journalists do politics. And I have with me a panel of our most elite and most prolific journalists who've decided elective politics is the way to go. Let's start with round introductions from Madam Speaker. Oh, ladies. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Uh, I'm Agnes Nadutu. Yes. Of course, no, no, no. <laughs> 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 okay, okay, maybe things have changed, but for your own interest, I yes. am Agnes Nadutu, yes. woman MP to the Abduda district. All right. Yeah. Well, um, uh, my name is Joel mm. Senyonyi, mm. spokesperson of uh, the People Power Movement mm. and the National Unity Platform Political Party mm. and also the incoming MP for Nakawa West constituency. Uh, all right. Uh, then Suleiman. Uh, Suleiman Kakaire. I'm a lawyer, journalist. Mm. All right, I, but you're but also but running in elective politics. Uh, yes, I'm uh, running. Yes. I'm standing in Bugweri. Yeah. Mm. yeah. So, so I, I wanted us to, to discuss when journalists do elective politics. But the biggest story at the moment, and I want to just spend five minutes, let's discuss this. <coughs> Makere University, the Ivory Tower caught fire um, just last night. And um, half the building was raised down. Um, you guys have been in the newsroom for a long time. You've covered fires, but you've also covered Mackay as a university. What do you make of what and happened? And they've also been there as students. Yes, as students, yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. What do you make of what happened at, at the university? Let's start with Kakaya and then. Uh, we're just having a brief chat about this whole incident. And uh, you, you, you gave me a detail of what happened. But there are many angles to that story. First mm -hmm. of all, if you're a journalist, after giving a detailed account of what happened, you're, you're expected also to investigate perhaps transactions that could have influenced the happy, the, this kind of fire. Perhaps there are people who are trying, at times they come off as conspiracies, mm. but you look at the entire chain, maybe within the system where there are contradictions that people were fighting over something and there is someone who is trying to hide something, they... The, this mm. and this. It That's could, one of the. Uh, well but it could have chases. also been an honest accident. It, exactly. That <laughs> yes. is. Now, then you come to. Mm. That's why I said you give a detailed account. But mm. when you're giving a detailed account of what happened, mm. you're looking also at the safety measures within the within uh, Avery Tower itself. Was there a possibility of someone stopping it, but they didn't act, or was is this just a, a honest kind of accident that could have happened? Mm. But you expected to investigate even the response mechanisms mm. the effect I, I what i expect also uh media to do is to give an implication in respect of uh what was lost mm. what is likely not to be recovered what can be recovered how make also as a university recover from that mm. because okay. you see that ivory tower is a symbol for the ivory it's so called makere mm. uh, and us who are who love makere so much because i mean i've done three degrees from makere and uh, Do I, has, I, 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 mm. yes i've been teaching there until i took uh, a stance to join active politics but that that is it's a form of identity mm. to most of us yes. so I, I want that's to what i see mm. that we've lost that how does it speak to the bigger loss Makere as a university is going to suffer and others who have identified with Makere. Mm. Then, then the last thing, the, 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 what will be the cost of putting it back to where it has been? So there are many angles. I look at it as a developing mm. story. Joel, when you read the press, what do you see lacking or what do you want to see in, in, in this Makere story? For starters, um, this was um, devastating to me too. I have an emotional attachment to Makere. Mm. The first time I went there was in 2006 to do my first degree. I am finishing my second degree there. I actually should have finished in May, mm. but, but uh, due to the lockdown and, and all of that, you know, so this is home to me. So when I first saw this, I actually saw a screenshot in one of the groups. I thought, mm. wait, this must be fake news. So I quickly went on Twitter to their verified account. Mm. Uh, it was very disturbing to see this. I, I hope that quickly enough we can try and tick a number of boxes. Um, because you see, with fires like these, investigations will happen or they will not. And for a very long time, they will keep telling us, hey, a report is coming. I don't mm. know if you have ever looked at the Bodo Inferno report. Mm. 
I, I, it hasn't I, come yet. It has never come out. Mm. And a plethora of others, you know, yeah? yeah. <laughs> Which the form of report? Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, I mean I that if they make preliminary reports, so they, <laughs> they would be qualified as reports. No, no. <laughs> you see, preliminary is... Uh, yeah. So, yes, we have seen, I don't know, somebody was cooking from around there, so we are investigating. <laughs> That's a preliminary. Mm. But then we are wait for, for, for the full proper report, yeah? Mm. I hope that will happen quickly, such that answers get to come through. Because I was learning that um, some of the offices that... Uh, were burnt to cinders, uh, the finance, and yes. the audit office, of course, the PRO's office, and several others, you know. Mm. And I said, and, and of course, now conspiracy theories will keep coming That's through for as long as you don't office for answer seats. questions, yeah? Because mm. somebody might say, wait a minute, is somebody trying to run away from audit queries such that when they are asked, they will say, but you see, things got burnt. Mm. You remember here in Parliament, somebody was asked for accountability and they said, you see, his papers were eaten by termites <laughs> and all of that. Yeah. Yes. So it, it certainly could have been an accident, mm. uh, but, but can we try and establish soon enough? Otherwise, conspiracy theories will keep flying all over the place when there are no answers. Mm. Uh, Agnes, what do you make of the story? I, I mean, just like my colleagues have said, it's a sad story. Mm. First of all, I, want, I would like to tell this government that the lockdown is taking too long. Mm -hmm. Maybe if they were not in the lockdown, this wouldn't have happened to this extent. Because the students would be there to make an alarm for the police mm -hmm. to come in. But you also ask yourself, is the police so far with the fire brigade? Mm -hmm. um, uh, one day, yeah, police station is there. Uh, the, the, the brigade mechanism. is not far away. And this was <laughs> in the middle of the night where there is no jam that the brigade would be delayed. So you wonder why the university bans to that extent without somebody coming to the rescue. Mm. I mean the documents, mm. the, the courts like Kakaira has said, how much money would be put there. And I'm telling you now the mafias in the government, this is an advant advantage for them to, to, mm. to, to, you know, <laughs> to skyrocket the, the cost of, 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 of the repairs at Makero University. The, mm. For us, we are saying it's sad as Ugandans who have the heart for this country. But mm. those who are making money from government, it's, happy, it's, it's good news for them because mm. they are going to make money. But I think it's so bad and it's high time government you know, lifts mm. the lockdown. Mm. Let's now switch gears to what we came to discuss, when journalists eventually do politics. And, and I want, in two minutes, each of you to tell me, when in, at, at what point in the newsroom did you say, maybe to change things, I need to be on the other side of the coin? Uh, when did it happen for you, Agnes? You see, uh, with my history, uh, all Ugandans know, um, I have... Uh, covered the parliament for quite a number of, a number of years. Mm -hmm. And I've seen very many wrong things go on. And that was the reason I started the People's Parliament. Because when I watched the, 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 the lifting of the term limits, people were speaking for themselves as members of parliament who had received five million to lift mm -hmm. the, age, the, the, the age limit. They were not speaking for the entire population. Mm -hmm. So I said, where is the platform for, for the citizen, him or herself, mm -hmm. as a mm -hmm. Ugandan, to speak to the powers that be? That's why I initiated the People's mm. Parliament and gave Ugandans a platform. So to me, we see many wrong things go, in, go on in government. A lot of corruption. What happens in Parliament? Is there a service for the people? Are these business people or the people who have the heart for the country to turn around the country economically and change the lives of the Ugandans? They are not there. Mm. So for us as journalists, who have the heart for this country? You sit down and say, you are not going to look for money in parliament, but let you go. You, you know where, where to press the button. You know where the wrong things are. Maybe when you go there, you have been reporting and showing the people what happens in government, what happens in parliament, what happens everywhere. Maybe you think when you reach there, you, mm. might, you, you will have the power to change things. But as a journalist, you, you know, you will write in a paper, you will put it on TV, the powers that be so powerful, they will look and nothing, nobody cares. So... To me, I wanted to go there and see if, as a person, can change things, most especially for my people in Bududa, mm. because the situation is so bad. Mm. But Agnes, I'm going to charge you for that, Karango, <laughs> <laughs> every time you mention the people of Bududa. <laughs> Joel, you are reading a bulletin. You resigned, and next week you were announced the spokesperson for, for People Power Movement then. When did it occur to you that maybe the newsroom is not the place to change things? Um, so... I actually do not agree that the newsroom, the newsroom is not a place to change things. I mm. think that everybody gets to make their contribution from wherever. I began my journalism journey in 2006. So mm. for nearly 14 years, I, I was plying this trade. And you see, when you're in journalism, you actually have got a front seat in the country's political theater. You get to see these things firsthand. You get irritated a lot more than uh, people out there. Because you see, so a news bulletin 
They will edit and edit and give you one hour. But you see, there's been hours of footage which, which the public doesn't get to see, doesn't get to interact with and, and all of that. And so many things kept bothering me for a very long time as a citizen, you know. Mm. Many times I would find myself on a collision path with uh, my bosses, whether it be here or elsewhere that I worked, uh, because I, I was quite vocal on a number of things. And I always said, look, I'm a citizen first, before I am, before I am a journalist. I'm, and I'm getting to that, you know. <laughs> so many things kept happening. And I remember when they were introducing OTT, I said, this is very problematic for me as a citizen. I said, no, 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 no. You cannot... First of all, it is the very poor that use mobile money. It mm. is young people that are on social media and using it as a platform. And you're saying, no, we've got to target them there and frustrate them. I said, I'm going to reject this as me. But even before that, during the age limit removal, um, <laughs> I remember I had a sit down with uh, one of my bosses. I said, you see, for me, as me, I'm saying no to this and I'm opposed to it. And whenever I'm on air, we used to be on the morning show and so on, I'll put my voice out there about this subject matter. Mm. And uh, we had a back and forth. But... I, I said, no, if something is problematic, I will speak out, me as me. So yes, then the OTT, and um, I decided to take part in a demonstration. I was actually part of those who planned it and executed it. Mm. It, it was a risky thing to do. Uh, was it special as a journalist? <laughs> yeah, but, but I think it was the right thing to do. And I went there as a journalist, as a citizen, actually. Mm. Not even as a journalist. I went as a citizen. So that's why in that protest you saw there were journalists. Like uh, yours truly, the <laughs> moderator. <laughs> you can also tell us how that happened for him. There were lawyers, there were artists, there were some politicians. It was people from different walks of life coming to say this is wrong. Mm -hmm. In fact, for us, we looked at it not as politics, but as economics. We said, wait a minute, this is a problem economically, even before it gets to be politically. So, of course, one thing led to another. Um, until the time came, I thought, I, I think I've run my race. Uh, let me go make my contribution the other end. They, it, it's something I battled with for months, by the way, for mm -hmm. a very long time. Uh, but, but time came. I had to take the plunge, and I'm glad I did. Mm -hmm. it's, it's tough. Mm -hmm. it's, it's different out there, my friend. It's, oh, my <laughs> goodness. How different? <laughs> I thought it's harder to just the yeah. stories. Oh, yo, yo, yo. So many times I'm there, and I actually get to miss this place. I'll be honest. <laughs> 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 but um, I'm, I'm glad I did this. I yeah. enjoyed this, my passion, uh, journalism. <laughs> But, but I'm also glad I'm on the other end making my contribution. That mm -hmm. does not take away the contribution made by journalists. I think, mm -hmm. you know, everybody gets a place and they feel, I'll keep making my contribution here. Another feels like myself. Let me go make my contribution in the political world. And yeah, mm -hmm. that's what I'm up to. Mm -hmm. Suleiman, you, you were writing for The Observer. You, you wrote political stories that altered the, the course of parliament. You wrote stories that impacted the way politics is conducted in Uganda. The, but in fact, the, the FDC, for example, for majority of the stories that came from the FDC came from you. When did it occur to you that maybe I shouldn't just write about it, I should be a part of it? Uh, and, and what was <laughs> the driving reason? I, I, th I think uh, me, I, at, at a time I became already politically conscious is when I say that was my starting journey. My journey when to join politics and where, at what stage. Uh, by the time I joined the newsroom, I was an active politician in the sense of political consciousness and even taking sides. I'd, I'd uh, before that even been a chairperson of UPC Makay chapter, uh, even my university days. So I joined the newsroom when it was very clear to the rest of the guys on the political desk that <laughs> I don't believe in the status quo. Mm. Uh, so all my stories were informed by my political conviction and the broad understanding of what I was fighting for. So I, I, by the time I'm in the newsroom, I'm already a politician because uh, one, I don't believe that there is someone who can obtain the position of neutrality to be a mere bystander. You can't first of all analyze when you take the neutral position. What you can only do in the newsroom is that you can offer a fair hearing to the rest of the guys, but almost everyone in the newsroom is partisan. Uh, just, just look, the story itself is partisan. You choose a particular angle and leave out one angle. Even the person, you as a writer, by the time it ends up on the, on the editor's desk, chooses this angle and decides not to go with that. Then at the, the most senior level, when they are choosing which story to take and not which to take, it's also determined by many other things, including politics, business, and the broad perception of that newsroom within the public. So I, I, I believe that me at a personal level, it was about conviction. And uh, 
it's an argument I make strongly in my master's dissertation that uh, the moment you are in a society as a media and you see that there is mal dysfunctionality, mal uh, no, 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 there is maladministration, there is dysfunctionality of the system, there is a breakdown of society, there are many things that you, in, in person you think that they are not going right. In such context, media rarely does it remain neutral and independent. It becomes part of the broad struggles. It becomes part of the struggle. So uh, you cannot purport to say that me I'm a neutral kind of uh, entity. But, but Raymond, to take you away from that kind of question, that at what stage do you start? Because that also informs your decision where you're joining. I wanted to give you just a conceptualization of something called the media. The, me the media is not, it doesn't exist in a vacuum. It's a communication platform. Communication platform which is utilized by all the social forces. There are many forces. They are the dominant forces and they are those forces which want to take over from the dominant forces. They are also the forces which are also the subject of the domination, which are oppressed. Within the media, there are those who offer the platform to the dominant force. There are those who offer the platform to those who want to occupy the dominant force. There are those who offer a platform to the dominated. And, and let me tell you, most of the times we just say that there are only two forces. That there are those who are dominating and they, those who are fighting the domination. No. At times you have those who are fighting for the domination, not because they are fighting domination, but to occupy a position of domination. So the media, <coughs> I look at it that it's a platform offering all those forces. Now when you're a journalist, you by conviction choose which force to represent. Now me, I represent the protest pr press. Even when I end up at ANT, I don't represent the ideology of ANT or the authority of ANT per se. I represent what ANT purports to stand for. I represent what by conviction I consider to be the right thing to do. Even when I end up in politics, even when I'm in the newsroom, that is the most important thing that we must understand on this platform, that it's about conviction. So even when you start to walk out of the newsroom, the conviction also determines which force you will ally with within the political space. Mm. If I, you I, believe in the conviction of, of NUP, that's why uh, Joel, my brother here, ends up at NUP and is not at DP, is not at FDC, is not at ANT, isn't it? It's the mm. conviction. Mm. I, I, and yes. from all these social forces, you look at what speaks to your identity. Mm. I, I, want, I want us to, to, to bring in Agnes here. You, you, you cross from the newsroom into the NRM and NRM is really the... the, the no, she the, ran away from the, the, Yes. <laughs> but so what, what was the conviction to say the NRM is the party within which my political ambitions and beliefs can you, be met? You see, um, Kataha, mm. I, I always believe that when you become a member of parliament, when you, you are seeking to become a member of parliament, you represent the views of the people who vote you into office. So the people of Bututa are dominantly NRM people. Um, mm. I want to tell you from the bottom of my heart that Bududa is 80% NRM. So for me to, to go there as a, uh, another party, then I, I, I wouldn't have gone there to represent their views. So mm. I chose NRM because NRM is the dominant party in Bududa. But uh, like Joel has said, I have chosen to, to run away from there. <laughs> <laughs> mm. I, not choosing to run away from there, but I think they, they, I was pushed to to the world. You see, the, the NRM election is what, what, has, what was happening throughout the country. It was so, uh, uh, I, I don't know how to describe it, but it, I think it is, a, it is a shame to the party uh, that you allow people to, 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 to buy voters. You allow people to use billions of money. You allow people to buy themselves into positions. To me, as a journalist, it's not right. It shows to the country that if you do not have money in NRM, then you will not be able to, to represent the, the, the people. If, like a, a journalist from a newsroom, you are, all these colleagues of mine are from the newsroom. We do not have that money, but we have the skills, we have the heart for our country. We want to represent our people. We want to speak for them. We want to, you know, to lobby for them. But if you don't have money, this means 
in NRM, you have, you have no, nowhere to go. The people who have money will buy themselves there. And I've been telling the people that I think we are making parliament to become a group of business people. That you can sell property, invest in the voters, they vote for you, and they will not see you for the entire five years until you go back to seek a re-election. And that is so sad for our country. And if the powers that be in this country leave the events to go as they are, we are throwing our country to the dogs. Okay. But you're, you're, you're also seeking to be among the powers that be in the country. <laughs> if you become the member of parliament, you know you can. That, you can. You, you can be among the them, mm. but you can be one white head mm. that can change things. Mm. One voice is not small. Mm. One voice can light. One, just one stick of a matchbox can light the entire forest. Mm. So if you go there with your straight mind, mm. you can speak and things can change. Mm. And this is the time I have been telling people that because we cannot change things, we shouldn't sit and look on. We should go there, however little voices we are, we should go there and change things. And the change begins now. And the change begins with you. Mm. Uh, That's why we are seeking to go there to see that things change. Even if not under NRM party, even if you're under another party, but Uganda as a country, as Ugandans, we are the people who are going to change our country. Uh, Agnes, there is something Raymond asked her. And for me, I, I keep telling, even Raymond, when he invited me for the show, there is something I pointed out. I don't like politicking on shows. He has asked about conviction mm. that you as a person, before you join the rest of Bududa, where are you convinced that NRM was the right platform for you before you throw it to the people there? Because the audience out there, they will perceive it like you were trying to be opportunistic that because this is predominantly NRM, <laughs> you go as an NRM. No, if I was... Because if, you have to clear that. If I was opportunistic... Uh, uh, where is the predominantly uh, if NRM? Yes, if but I, I chose was to opportunistic, be? I would not have gone to, to, to contest in Bududa where majority of the people do not have TVs and they don't know me as a person. They just hear about me. I would have contested in Kampala where every household know me. I would have contested in Mukono district where I stay and everybody knows me. I would have contested from Bari city where everybody knows me. Mm -hmm. But I was convicted to go and represent my people for your own information. So yeah, it, was about about, it was not about it was not about I yes. told you that well, NRM. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. So. And, and I want, I want, I want to bring in, I want to bring in Joel here. Um, Joel, you, you, you left the newsroom and went to contest in a constituency. The constituency was split into two, and you had to decide which side of the constituency to go. Mm. But also, were, the, were things that happened during your stay in the newsroom? Did mm. they influence where you went after the newsroom? Did they influence, mm. for example, why you chose people power over the NRM? Did they influence people power over FDC, for example? Yeah, without a doubt, because um, <laughs> suffice to say, I, and I say it with a lot of humility, I'm a founding member of the People Power Movement. Mm. Um, now NUP. Now NUP. Still, Lots of still things exists, yeah. <laughs> happened behind <laughs> the scenes. Um, people Power NUP. <laughs> yeah, NUP is the political party that People Power has. <laughs> NUP is the registered political party because yeah. mm -hmm. the movement was not registered. You know, so, I mean, there's many things that I used to be part of even when I was an active journalist because... I was an active citizen, and I chose to say no to certain things. I said no to age limit removal as a, as a citizen, even though I was in the newsroom. And so I connected with friends, uh, you know, Honorable Chagulanya and the plethora of others, mm -hmm. and uh, we did what we were able to do, and then, of course, a while later, OTT, and then all of that. So these are people we connected with and, and buffed this. So for me, it was actually not so much about leaving to, to join. Uh, it was about saying... Okay, so I've run my race here. Let me now go and uh, further build something that um, I had the opportunity to, to be a part of the originators, so to speak. As far as Nakawa West is concerned, I'll tell you honestly. So when I left the newsroom, I actually did not think I would stand in 2021. I, I didn't think so. Um, of course, yeah, I'm politically active. I thought maybe some time to come and so on. For now, let me go and play my part, you know, as spokesperson. But uh, dynamics keep changing, and along the way you feel, maybe I can do this too. Maybe I can be a voice here too. Um, I can make use of this platform to, to be a voice. A voice that is different. When you look at that August house, with all due respect, you, you look at both sides, by the way, of the aisle, and you're thinking, wow, wow, how did we get here? 
how did we get here? So I said, you know what, I've complained enough. Um, so either I dig my heels in, I take the plunge, or I keep on the sidelines and complain, like, like many people do. And, and maybe there's a place to complain. Mm -hmm. Maybe there's a place to rant on social media, and, and it's good that people air out their voices wherever they can. But I guess there's a place, especially when you feel it on the inside, when you feel that, when you get that gut feeling. Say, so you know what? Let me, let me directly get involved and uh, make my contribution, however small, however small. Because, you see, each of us ought to be like a cog in the wheel, that there's something I can do which Kakaere can't, and vice versa. You know, <coughs> that there's something Nandutu can do which I'm not able to. That each of us is get, gets to be like a cog in the wheel. So I say, let me get there in and make my small contribution. Am I going to all of a sudden metamorphose and change things for the better? <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't think so. But, but I believe that... that, that uh, on your effort and energy. Of course, that's true. But, but I believe that I can make my contribution, mm. hopefully be able to draw others to do the same and, and then somehow we can get to have concerted efforts. Mm. All right. Thank you so much. I, I want us to take a very short break, but when we return, we will be discussing the j other journalists who've walked this path before, the Wafulo Gutus who've gone before us, Semu Junganda, who've been in the political domain and how they've influenced uh, politics there and how, okay. and how and mm. how, how, how different we will be. <laughs> <laughs> but let, yes, let's take a very short break. When we return, we discuss the other journalists who've been there before us. With NTV, <coughs> we are back with the fourth estate. We want we, before we broke off, we were discussing the journalists who've walked before us in, <coughs> into the political space and the kinds of changes <coughs> they've made. Have any of these changes influenced any of you in ways that you've said, This is why I think that I should also join the August House? Uh, let's start with you, Kakairi. Yeah, me, me, it's a uh, conviction. I, I will tell you that one of the biggest political influences on my political thought is Antonio Gramsci, who is, is basically out of our context in Uganda. But he was an <coughs> Italian, uh, <coughs> Italian political thinker and journalist uh, who eventually became one of the influential leftist thinkers. Uh, in our context, when you look at the movements of the early 1940s and, and 50s, what we call the protest press, which the, the colonial government banned, most of those influential journalists started platforms of engagement. And the news uh, media as a platform became an influential catalyst for the struggles of, uh, of the colonized. Uh, coming to the 1960s, uh, the 70s, you see it's the same thing. It's replicated. But the most recent that you can look at is uh, the Chintumusoke, the Sapoba group who started Weekly Topic. Mm -hmm. which made the Chai Sonyango Bows, the Waflo Gutus. Uh, and you see when they start weekly topic, it becomes a platform for the NRM. When eventually NRM takes over power, weekly topic operates, but eventually the, the entire group is eaten by the new government of that day. Now for some thinking that we, but we cannot just become a status quo newspaper, how can we come up with another platform that can perhaps become a critique of the establishment? They start the monitor. And that's how the WAFs, uh, who are formerly weekly topic workers, the likes of uh, the Teveres, I, th I suspect even Tevere was part mm. of that group, the late says Teddy Cheye. When Teddy Cheye realizes that, okay, the, the, criti the critique is, is tense. And you see even the government itself, the way it responded to monitor, for almost... A biggest period of the 90s, they were denied, deprived of advertisements. Obviously, eventually, Monitor or NMG as a, as a platform, government finds a way. Uh, you economically strive for them. Even the criminal, the criminal, the criminal, those, uh, the criminal laws are utilized to stay for it, to restrict it. 
uh, monitor has been at the forefront when you look at the judgments, uh, the most important being the Chai Son Yango Bo and Andrew Mwenda case. It was also part of that response to the critique monitor was making about government. Uh, eventually, it's, uh, it's taken over by Aga Khan, uh, and you see the style of, of writing is completely different mm. of, uh, from uh, the, the, of the yes, one but, of but yesterday. I, I want but to, I, I'm yes, trying to tell yes, you, but what I want you that to media... Arrive at, yes, what uh, I want you to arrive at is, for example, in the previous parliament, there were bills that should have been passed. They mm. didn't pass. There were bills that we think should never have passed, but they were passed. Mm. And there were journalists who had turned politicians who were at the forefront of fighting for the passing or stopping the passing of those bills. Did you ever at any point feel like this is a space that I should occupy and, and, and is, is your ambition deeply rooted in the fact that the way they have succeeded before us or where they failed before us, you're willing to offer more? Obviously, y you get that feeling, but it's quite emotional because when you become an MP, will you change the position which is going to be taken by parliament except when you work on the numbers beat. Mm. So you just basically say, okay, let me join the group, since the numbers are, are, are few, let me join the group. But eventually, when you become an MP, if you've not worked on the collective increment in the numbers, it will affect you. That, that's why me, at an individual level, I'm more interested in speaking to the cause as opposed to speaking to where I'm joining. Mm -hmm. That you never know what happens. Uh, uh, about a particular bill or law of parliament which you wanted to push in the platform. But the most important thing is that you have you taken an action to defend what you believe in, regardless of the outcome. Because if by conviction you believe that it's very important to join a force which is seeking for the improvement of the condition of humanity, not even uh, political change, because political change can happen. Political change can happen, which is not going to improve the condition of humanity. The most important thing that concerns me at an individual level is the condition of humanity, mm. the dignity of humanity, the respect for each other, and also having a destiny that speaks to everyone's satisfaction. Mm. That is why I'm in politics. Now, at a distance... I, I used to cover parliament with the Agnes's. I, I think I joined Agnes's when the speaker eventually raised the flag after I'd litigated in the high court and defeated <laughs> parliament after being thrown out because of my critical reporting. They said that those who have covered parliament beyond five years, they should not report. And that's how the Agnes's were affected. Mm -hmm. I know that on this platform, Agnes will not concede, but I remember when I was with them in the Uganda Parliament uh, Press Parliamentary Association, they used to say, but no, 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 you guys are too vocal. Uh, you see, you Actually, Kakairo is spoke for you. Eventually, <laughs> <spoke> for you. <laughs> I was the president. You went and Kakairo for your own information. I was the president so you, you of the United States. I was the I was the president <laughs> and I, was, I spoke for him actually. We even put up a demonstration <laughs> and demanded that Kakaire and Lumu come back to parliament. Oh, yeah. Please do not deceive the country. <laughs> no, let's, Kakaire. no, no, no. Me, as the president, I did my best. We will have this discussion again. But it's okay. I'll just lemon. Let's allow. I preempted it, but it's okay. Let me just conclude. I, I want to to come in just very, very I just wanted to conclude mm -hmm. my thought. Okay, that, that conclude your thought in a minute. The, the then question you're asking me, was I excited by the fact that something happened and perhaps I should have been the person in that seat? I'll tell you, there could be that excitement and emotion, but my joining is not pure resting on it. My joining is resting on the view that I am in a journey of improving the condition of humanity, regardless of where I stand. Whether I'm a, a journalist, whether I'm a lawyer, whether I'm a politician. And I will tell you that it does not stop at a stage where I am. So I look at my change of play from journalism or law to now politics as a continuation of my personal struggles of life, that I must improve the conditions of humanity. Mm. Jo Joel. Mm. Did any of the politicians inspire you into saying, I want to take this on? And, and there's many politicians that I know that you probably were in newsrooms with or that you talked to who were journalists before. Yes and no. So there are those <laughs> who disappointed me. <laughs> and those also gave me reason to say, but you know what? Eh? <laughs> let's, let's, let's make sure sanity yes. gets into this place, you know. But there are those you look at and say, okay, um, I think they're doing their very best. There's been many journalists in that August house. Uh, 
I don't know if you remember a gentleman called uh, Kad Busozi. Mukasa. Mukasa. Mm. Uh, of course, Moses Kachibante is still there. Honorable mm. Semunjunganda and the prefect of Margaret Adams. Mahanga, uh, too. Yes, Margaret so Mahanga. Mm. Of course, previously, the Chief Tumusoke is a uh, former prime minister. And, and, and several others. Um, sadly, of course, some of them would get there in and they become a shadow of their former past because they get eaten by the bug. Yeah? So, uh, bits and pieces. But let me say this. I, I think that every citizen should play their part in bettering our country from wherever they are. I, I don't think that I must first wait to get into parliament for me to cause change. Um, I'm not in parliament yet. But I would like to think I have made some small contributions. You know, even when I was in the media, um, and, and the media needs to know that it's very powerful. I think we needn't despise ourselves. Mm. You need to know you've got such a huge platform, you know. I, I liked to host some hard-hitting interviews and, and hold power to account to host ministers. And uh, sometimes interviews would turn out so bad. But because I'm asking such critical questions, would expose. I remember when I was still here. Oh, my goodness. <coughs> we exposed... So many things, mm. you know, and many times you get government very unsettled and then they end up taking action about certain things, delivering a service, not so much because they want, but because there is some nagging media house or some nagging group of journalists or that kind of mm. thing, which was an incredible thing to do. So I don't see myself as saying, let me get into parliament so that I can uh, make a contribution. I would like to think I have been making a contribution, however small, even now, mm -hmm. I am, you are making your contribution. Mm -hmm. You don't necessarily have to first cross over to Parliament. Of course, when the thought eventually comes mm -hmm. and there is uh, an opportunity to, to get there in, why not take up that platform and use it well enough? If you have been able to use this one well enough, then mm -hmm. you should be able to do as, as, as such. Yeah? But uh, I, I would like to think that everybody needs to see themselves as, as change agents, mm -hmm. you know? That even if you're just a, a border border rider, and I'm actually sorry to say just a border border because, you know, mm -hmm. you're border border rider, not just. Mm -hmm. I, I think that you're influential in, mm -hmm. in many respects once you do things right. Once you're not one of those who poorly ride on the roads, safety, very key. <laughs> once you're one of those who will say, well, I'm a citizen, for example. Mm -hmm. I should be involved in, in, in what's going on. I should mm -hmm. be active. You know, when I see something wrong going on, I say, mm-mm. Wherever it is that you are, yeah. I think that every Ugandan needs to get that. Exactly. Um, and, and that's why when I see people sometimes despise social media, I say, mm -mm, wait a minute. Um, I think that those people are using the platform that they have. Yeah. Let them use it. Okay? Don't wait to first uh, become a rainbow Mujuni. Uh, be whatever you are. Who is a nobody? Whatever. <laughs> uh, well, <laughs> <laughs> which many other people no. do yes. not have, yeah? yeah. But, but you see, even those that don't have the kind of platform that you have, mm. they have what they have. And if they get to maximize it and mm. make very good use of it, mm. it's incredible the kind of things that can happen. Mm. Agnes, the, the, the politicians that inspired you, and you were in par you covered parliament for a very long time. Yeah. So there's got to be people who you said, "I want um, to be that." I, I concur with the with the with, with the jo with Joel saying that you do, you don't have to go to parliament to influence. You can influence the country uh, wherever you are. Before I talk about people who have inspired me, me I don't know whether they are there. But uh, as journalists, we, we we just joined politics to enhance what we what we have done. Just like Joel has pointed up, what he has done as a journalist. You see, I was a, as a journalist, I am proud that I initiated, we, we actually uh, took a, an amendment to the rules and procedures of parliament. We went to the rules and the par parliamentary committee. Mm. And the, we pushed for it to have cameras in the chambers of parliament, to have cameras inside. There, previously, there were no cameras. You would not enter there with a phone, not even a laptop, not even a recorder. Not a camera. Previously, it wasn't there. But as the president of Uganda Parliamentary Press Association, we moved, for, we moved it. And we, we failed on the floor of the house. It was rejected. We did a recommito. We actually called a press conference and blacks listed the Olanyas, blacks listed the Tinkas Mirrors, many more MPs who were against. That day. Yes, we, <laughs> we blacklisted them and said, we are not going to cover you until you are. When we did a recommito, it was allowed. And that is the reason you saw people fighting in parliament during the, the age limit <laughs> debate. <laughs> debate in parliament. Others, you wouldn't have seen the fight in parliament if it was not for us journalists to move for that amendment for us to have cameras in the chambers of parliament. So as a journalist, that's a big contribution on, on my side. So it is just to enhance on what we have been doing. I have, been, I have given the rest of Ugandans the voice to speak on TV. 
even the grassroots people, the, the LOC councillors, the, 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 the peasants, they have... I, I did that as a journalist, and I think going to parliament is just to enhance and maybe have a bigger voice uh, uh, to change things in, in the country. But um, mm, people who have gone to parliament and those who have gone in bed with government have not, I should be sincere, that we have not had their voices and they have not shown the country that as journalists when they joined the parliament, things changed apart from the Semuju. Uh, Semuju has put up his stand in parliament and he's really speaking for the voiceless in the country but the rest and maybe Moses Kasibante maybe mm. being on opposition mm. maybe they do no 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 okay. I want to be sincere I, I like mm. that maybe yes, I maybe I like being on, on opposition they have uh, 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 an independent voice to speak about yeah. it but being mm. maybe in the system you are gagged mm. but I'm happy that even those who are not journalists and then their system they have not been gagged they 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 they, they, they Remyaga MP, uh, Theodore Sechkubo, the mm -hmm. Tinka Simires, the, 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 my friend, the uh, council, Wilfred Nwagaba, they have stood their ground. Uh, Wilfred has mm -hmm. since left it because he yes, realized I, that I, they, they, they have stood their ground. Mm -hmm. But to be sincere, I, apart from the few who are in the opposition, no journalist who has joined the parliament has inspired me to say, maybe as a journalist, if I join parliament, I am inspired by my own that what I have done in <laughs> journalism, <laughs> maybe I will do better when I go to when parliament. But the Kenjo who have, they have talked about, really, yeah. they, they, they did a good contribution. Mm. Remember, he was the first president of Uganda uh, Generalist, Generalist Association. Association. Mm. He actually, when I interviewed him the, the, in the living history, mm. he was the pa he, he copied it from India when he was in India. He was mm. inspired by other countries who have journalist associations. We didn't have it before. Mm. So introducing it here was a big, big, big big up for him. Mm. That was good for him. Mm. They Bidandi Salis, the, the Superb so Boys. The, the support, yeah, the, actually, uh, he was together with Bidandi. You see, he, he was a politician and he was with the ruling government. But when things went wrong, he stood up and said, no, mm. I am not going with the system. If this is not going like this, I am not with the system. Mm. Those, are the, those are the kind of journalists we need in parliament. Mm. That not for the sake of, you know, because the government in power is saying yes, therefore you should say yes, even if something they are supporting is against the will of the people of Uganda, that you mm. should go in bed with government. That mm. one, I don't agree. Yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm going to ask I'm a, a, a question very selfishly, because now we have very little time left, and, and you each have like about two minutes to respond to it. Mm. Um, within you are uh, about some 30 years or 40 years of experience in journalism that have left the newsroom. Mm. And the newsroom at this critical juncture needs to cover politics in ways that it has never covered it before. You have denied the newsroom institutional memory. You've walked away from <laughs> the newsroom with all its institutional memory. Do you have times when you sit back and say, maybe I would have covered this story better? If I did this, maybe this story could have been better. And when that happens to you, wh what do you do about it? Start with you, Slim, and then we'll. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've summarized the question in a more simpler way so that I can respond directly and in a better way. The, the, when you sit back home mm. and watch or read the newspapers mm. and you see the level of reporting, and with the knowledge you've had for 10 years, 13 years, 20 years covering, are there points you say, I would have interviewed this source better. This oh, oh. article could have been better. It would have informed the public much better. Are there times when you have that? And when you have it, do you call a newsroom editor and say, I, I don't like this story. Can, can we edit it differently? Personally, I do, especially editors who don't believe that when I am raising that, I'm not just trying to despise the quality of reporting, but I'm trying, I'm a meaning citizen. Uh, personally, I feel that uh, my experience at some point needed to be utilized by, by the, all the platforms, I, 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 I believe. Obviously, I can't work for New Vision because I, <laughs> I, I personally, I love listening to my voice and being heard. I, I don't think it can be a good option for me, but I'm, I'm trying to mean that other entities, I, I believe that there is still space for me. But I would not respond in respect of their inner logic because the inner logic of the newsroom today, they proceed on assumption that a media house is a neutral player, which is wrong. 
that is very, very long as, it's very wrong as an inner logic. Because me, when I'm thinking about it that way, I'm not even trying to seek for a job. I'm not trying, because I'm a practicing lawyer. Mm -hmm. I, I, uh, I'm a partner at a law firm, so I'm not looking at it as a form of employment. Mm -hmm. I look at journalism as a label of love. Yeah. But, but so, Lema, so, so, sorry to push you a bit I, on this. And why I'm pushing you on this is, when this thoughts occur to you, do you imagine that had I remained in the newsroom and become an editor, the newsroom's inner logic would have changed? Do, do you, does that I, happen? I, I, it's still the newsroom to accommodate the growth and advancement in your profiling also speaks to the inner logic of the newsroom. Because for them to say Kakai can be retained and become this or all that also speaks to the inner logic. But me, I reached a point where even my decision to join politics, it was not just a purely an individual decision. It involved many stakeholders of Bugweri, the, the, the people of Bugweri who had groomed me to be what I am today. Mm -hmm. They also felt like your voice must be there. Uh, and it's not uh, well, uh, like and, and <laughs> no, 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 I'm not saying that. <laughs> Me, I wanted because by conviction. And I'll tell you when I was in the newsroom, mm. you see, you, you can go to the courts, uh, they are records. I litigated, first of all, to stop define, defining media in parliament as a stranger, mm. using a 1955 act yeah. to define media as a stranger. I was saying that in a in a, a new constitutional dispensation of the one of 2000, of 1995. The media is a very important player in our democracy. Yeah. I was, I'm, I'm part of that litigation. Mm -hmm. You go back, there is a judgment of Justice Yasin Inyanzi. Two, I, um, I filed a constitutional petition with Simon Kagwanjara challenging the vetting of parliament, that is the appointments committee, mm -hmm. from being a secret vetting process, we are challenging it in the constitutional court to say that it must be open, mm -hmm. because that is in, in trying to bring the internal workings of parliament to be in tandem with the constitutional dispensation. Mm -hmm. I have deponed many, many affidavits in support of many media challenges. One of the most important is the case of Uganda Journalist Association challenging the opening of ready paper by through based on uh, just a mere negotiation at state house and we are saying that no if you are going to search a media house it should not be such like any other mm. uh, entity. any entity mm. and i depend that affidavit is mm. part of the record in the court mm. that i did it before i became an MP. Mm. So it's by conviction meets conviction. Mm. Obviously I, yes. when my conviction there is a confluence of interest between my conviction and the people of Bugweri, that's when you say, okay, let me join parliament. Mm. Because you can't just go to Bugweri when people don't want you. You must <laughs> yes, go where I, people I, want I, you. I, I want uh, Joel. The, uh, actually, even yeah. on my slogan, I use mm. So they have groomed me, I've become what I am. Now it's time to serve them. Uh, uh, Joel, else. Um, there are some politicians who even intimated, mm. some of them even openly said, it, I'm very lucky that Joel Senyon no longer interviews here. <laughs> they feel like it's now comfortable for them to come and do interviews. And it's the hard-hitting nature of interviews that produced some really great work that we saw. Um, I, I remember one of the interviews you had, for example, with Tumukunde calling him out on, on electoral offenses. He's now running for president. Um, do you feel like when you watch interviews now that your absence has cost the newsroom something? Remember, there's a guest who came. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and uh, they like when you was going to interview them. They quickly ran to the news manager's office and said, you man, yeah. <laughs> do you why do you want to make me look bad? <laughs> 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 and then we handled it eventually. Mm. Look, um, w when I joined the media in 2006, my hand was literally held by a gentleman called Bali Francis the Late. He took me up, he mentored me, he taught me many things, and, and I learned from him. And he slowly but surely ceded space, you know, uh, I remember the very first news bulletin I anchored, I was with him. That's something I dreamt as a little boy, and then the dream came true. Mm. And then eventually he seeded space, left me and mm. so on. He kept we have a copy of he that, kept that withdrawing. <laughs> we, will, we will play it. <laughs> uh, when I had this big jacket and so yes. on. So he kept withdrawing yeah. and cheering me on, correcting me and all of that. He did not say, no, I am the veteran. I've got to keep doing this, you know. Mm. 
He let the young fellows take charge. And every so often would make mistakes. And then he would come into his office and say, ah, but now this word, you don't pronounce it like this. You pronounce it like this. And then you learn. You know, now you don't sit like this. You, you get it. But, but he gave us a chance to make mistakes and to keep learning. And uh, we made our contribution too. I, I would like to keep thinking of it that way. That as Senyonyi, I don't have to necessarily keep sitting in a newsroom as if there are no other people who can do a <laughs> good job. You know, brothers. create space, you know. I, I always uh, looked at many of the interns that would come in and use when they're still here. And uh, I, I tried to connect with them. And where I would see something, I would say, hey, but now this one, like this, you know. Mm -hmm. Then we'd go to the voice, the, the, the voice booth. <laughs> and now you voice again this one to help them because I was helped. You know, I, I, was, I was helped by certain people. I should mm -hmm. be able to do the same. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, that we should not be living in fear. So if I leave this place, who will uh, host interviews? Are you kidding me? They are going to be much better yeah, people than ourselves. Mm -hmm. Allow them space, allow them to make some mistakes, help them to get better. I, I still honestly consider myself a part of this family. Every once mm -hmm. in a while, I get the phone and I call the editor and I give, share a news story mm -hmm. tip. Say, hey, there's this happening. I think you should send somebody. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. and, and, and all of that, yeah? Mm -hmm. When I see errors on TV, <laughs> I don't know who to call because mm -hmm. I'm still here. <laughs> and I'm like, guy, Kati, what happened here? You are part of the audience. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know, yes. But, 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 but I think it's important to say, I have played my part. And you see, in the political world, something similar is happening. There are people who will say, sure, we cannot hand over this our country to mm. these young boys. Are you kidding me? For heaven's sake, this country does not start and end with you. You came in as young boys. These guys were 27 years old as ministers, 28 mm. as army commander and mm. all of that. So mm. you don't look at a 30 plus year old and you say, ah, these ones are young. Mm. A, a time comes and uh, that gets to be a shift. Boris so a former journalist. Th there you are. So with the newsrooms, um, I think that there's incredible talent that is being tapped into the newsrooms. Uh, there's many things that I see from, from home and I'm happy about. Of course, there's things that irritate me. Mm. But, but, you know, you allow them to make certain mistakes. Hopefully, they'll keep improving. But, but, but I like the crop, slowly but surely. Of course, there's many things that you're thinking, ha, ah, ah, ha, now here. But, but hopefully, they'll get it eventually. Mm. But, but let's allow for that growth. As opposed to it has got to be me and nobody else who told mm. you. <laughs> Agnes, <laughs> Speaker's Parliament. Uh, um, people's Parliament. Yes, speaker people's, people's Parliament. Yes, parliament. Speaker of People's Parliament. <laughs> yes. um, parliamentary report, <laughs> much of parliamentary reporting inside of NTV. Mm. People still refer to you. I, I even see it in the newsroom. I want a name of this MP. Agnes would have it. Madam now, speaker. Now that you're not around, do you feel like your departure from the newsroom at least momentarily, has mm. cost the newsroom in, in its ability to report? I, I don't think so. Mm. See, Joel has mentioned he, he joined journalism in 2006, you know. I started journalism in 1997 as a young girl with Radio Uganda and UTV. Mm. So I have worked in radio, I have worked in newspaper, and now in TV. 20 years in journalism, I think I've done my best. And I don't regret uh, graduating from journalism to politics. I don't regret. And I don't think I've left a virgin. The people who are there are qualified. Just, just as Joel said, we were, we were also trained. We were young people in the newsrooms. But we're helped by the, 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 the seniors. So I think the newsroom has been taken over by the young people who are professional enough who have attained the skills that we, we have, and they're doing a good job. Maybe, like, maybe a mistake here and there. The mistakes that we also used to do, mm -hmm. and other senior journalists would look and say, no, this should have been done like this. Mm -hmm. Just advice here and there. But I, well, I miss the newsroom. I miss uh, reporting, being on TV and doing a sign-up as Agnes <laughs> Nandu. I, I, I miss it. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> we still have space. <laughs> yes. But uh, I, I do not regret because I know that there are people who can do the job that mm -hmm. I was doing. If people's parliament has been taken over by, by another person, he's mm -hmm. doing a good job. Mm -hmm. I'm only waiting for somebody to take over point blank. And uh, I think <laughs> they, they will do, <laughs> they will do a good job. Mm -hmm. Only that what That's I feel... Satire. What, what is sad is, you see, some of us who are doing critical reporting in parliament, we are shown the way to, out of parliament. Out of parliament. Mm -hmm. It was unfair. I went to court. We went to court as, as a Uganda Parliamentary Press Association. But some elders talked to us. This is the old they, they talked to us. <laughs> but we are going to win that case, just like Kakaire won the case mm -hmm. he has told you about it. But he, the 
the reporting in, in, in parliament is not as it used to be. Not because they don't know what to do, but they have been gagged. They cannot look into the corners and see these things are going wrong. They have been gagged. Some of us who were, who were so hard to be gagged, we are shown in the exit. Uh, actually, Agnes, to give you information, mm. in the recent 10 years, you can look at a list of many journalists who have ended up as employees at parliament, yeah. staff of parliament. Mm. It's ridiculous to that extent. And to I, end I there, you have to, do, mm. you, 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 you have to do the reporting that the powers in parliament want you, the way they want you to report. So that, I, I feel bad about that. But in the newsroom, I am comfortable with what is going on, mm. and I don't regret, but I also... Uh, maintain that once a journalist, you remain a journalist. Mm. Even if I am out of the newsroom, I can do reporting. I mm. cannot look at the accident and then I have a camera. Now we, we, it's a modern world. You, you mm. don't have to have a, a camera and a tripod to record the scene. Mm. Uh, with your phone, you can record the scene. So once a journalist, I remain a journalist, mm. but I have said bye to the newsroom and I want to join the places to turn around this country because mm. when you sit and look at what is happening in the country, as a person who has the heart for this country, you say no. Maybe when you're there, you will press yes, some button maybe. and maybe things can change. Because the country has been taken over by the rich people who do not mind about the poor person who gave him or her a vote. Those people do not mind whether other people go to school or not. They will make money. They will buy you with 1,000 shillings, buy the vote to parliament, educate the, their children and their families, and the voters' children will remain in poverty forever. These are the things that touched my heart, and I said, let me go there and see if I can change. But I request the country, and I request the powers that be, that maybe we need a legislation that we remove money from politics. And mm -hmm. I request President Yoweri Museveni, the head of this country, and his NRM party, that money should go out of politics. If we don't put out money out of politics, the country is done. Mm. Thank you so much. That's mm -hmm. Agnes mm -hmm. Nadudu <laughs> running in Bududa. We have Joel Senyonyi running in Nakawa, and uh, we have Suleiman Kakaire running in Bugweri. Thank you so much for joining us today. All of you are still journalists. We still have space wait, wait, if you wait, need wait, a story. I am running in the newsroom, uh, hosting Fourth Estate, still hosting. Post, <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm on post. But thank you so much for watching the Fourth Estate. We'll be back Sunday, same time.